Hello everyone, uh, this is a very quick tutorial that I'd like to put out there for everyone who is uh, interested in a few tips and tricks in LightWaveable programs. As you can see here we have an image of a nebula. Now if we go over to layout, you'll see one that I prepared earlier. This is the object in question. Now if we go into the perspective view, you'll see what I'm talking about. Essentially what I've done is I've created a hemisphere with the texture that you would normally use for a nebula mapped to it. Now this can be very useful in some scenes if you wanted for instance a space scene where you had a nebula in the background and uh, you wanted your objects to be able to interact within the scene but not with the nebula itself. You wanted something that the camera would then be able to track and follow so that you can give some sort of presence to your scene other than maybe a few stars or whatever. Okay, so how do we make this? Well, let's start with Modeler. Let's go ahead and create ourselves a ball now we want something with a big enough scale so we need to zoom out to let's say 50 kilometers doesn't really matter that much in terms of scale because most of your scene will normally take place within a smaller area so as long as you make it big enough that it encompasses your scene and doesn't get in the way then you're fine uh, now for this one it doesn't really need to be of uh, an extraordinarily high detail just high enough that you don't see any facets within your scene. Uh, 48 segments and 24, sorry, 48 sides and 24 segments is usually sufficient for this. Now, once we've created our sphere, we then invert it so that the polygons are facing inwards because that's what we will need. Uh, we then get rid of the tops and the bottoms. So if you select it very carefully around the poles. and then we'll say that much from the top and the bottom get rid of that uh, and then we can cut the rear out because we will only be assuming a camera angle of somewhere within this region here so we won't need too much now that we've got that sorted out we can go ahead and go into our surface editor uh, first of all I turn smoothing on for all of these types of things because it tends to be a means of uh, smoothing out any facets that are visible in the scene. Uh, the color channel isn't too important at the moment but we do want to turn up the luminosity and we want to turn off the diffuse. Uh, the reason for which is we don't want light to interact with the polygon but we do want to give it its own ability to project light into the scene if ever we need to use it for radiosity and reflection calculations for instance. Uh, now let's give it a texture. I've already prepared a few in advance so let's go ahead now and add one gone into the wrong directory there. That's fine, we can go into our uh, tutorial. Now you probably have your own uh, directory set up for this anyway, you'll want to bring in your own images. Um, but in this case I've already prepared a number of images for this. Uh, I'm going to bring in my modified Hubble Space Telescope um, nebula that I downloaded from the public domain. Now it will be added as a planar object which means it will be projected straight on as if it was on a front face of flat plane. Now we don't want this. We want this as a spherical object. We want to increase the wrap amount to 2 because we're assuming that it's going to be projected all around the surface of the object. And what we need to do now, a little tip I learned, turn the uh, texture onto a heading of 90 degrees. Now this bit's important too. We need to change the texture axis to Y. need to make sure that it's in the zero axis which we'll come to in just a moment I clicked on automatic sizing to get the correct size and orientation of the texture now what we need to do is to zero it on all axes because if you don't do that as I will show you here um, you will end up with a texture that's halfway along the image for instance as you can see there and it looks a bit of a mess and it won't render right so need to make sure that this is all centered properly. Okay, The scale we don't need to worry about too much. We've already taken care of the top and bottom scale using automatic sizing. The rotation, as I said, uh, needs to be 90 degrees. If it's not, then what you'll get is the texture will wrap around and then you'll end up with a texture that cuts off on both ends. It doesn't look very good. Uh, now don't worry about this. You see in the middle here, it's an OpenGL error. It doesn't show up in the final render. Uh, you will get it on the edges though, as you'll see there. Uh, now once you've applied this texture, first thing to do is to copy the selected layer 
and then move on to your transparency channel. Now there is a reason why I've added a transparency channel to this. Uh, I prepared an image for this earlier which I will then use to block off areas that are not supposed to be visible in the image. Uh, it's because if say for instance you have a star field or a star field plugin in my case uh, which you then use to project a star field onto the background you don't want the parts of the plane that are black to be blocking out those stars which would otherwise happen. So now that we've sorted that one out we have essentially created our object we then go ahead and save this uh, now we need to change our directory now what you would normally do is um, you would change the content directory of your Lightwave installation for those of you that are using Lightwave these techniques by the way can be transferred into any other application that you're using uh, Blender for instance works in a very similar way uh, the buttons and the controls are slightly different but otherwise this is transferable. Now, we then save our object in here. We'll call this Nebula Crescent. And that'll do. And then we send the object to layout. What this then does is it takes it into our animation portion of the program, which we will see in just a moment. There we go. Okay. I'll change to the camera view, and the first thing I do is I switch the camera on and I zero that. So then what we've got is a camera is in the middle of the scene and the nebula surrounds it at a distance of some several hundred kilometers so anything else you might want to load into the scene won't be affected by it now at this point I'm going to turn off the uh, position channels for the camera just so that we don't interfere with it uh, and as you can see I can now move the camera around any direction I want and you can see the nebula there now as I said this is a rendering error but if we actually go ahead and render the scene just going to set up some defaults here that not really necessary for this demonstration um, but we can go ahead and render out I'm going to render it at 50% because I'm screencasting at that resolution and it won't be able to fit in but let's just see what it comes out as as you can see here that render error in the image isn't actually on the final render so yeah Lightweb will see it properly and you won't have any errors in the final render itself so that's just a, a mapping error with the OpenGL rendering engine it doesn't really make any difference now you can animate your movement across which is what I've done here now if we play this back obviously you're moving across the uh, element that you're seeing in the scene uh, it will render properly when it comes to rendering out obviously as we'll do another test render there as you can see looks fine uh, now, as I said, the transparency that I selected uh, was an important thing because uh, we may need to drop something in the background. Now, in this case, I've got a, um, a plugin that I use which will allow stars to be dropped in at the back. And you can see them now. I'm going to just briefly show you what would happen if they weren't there. If the transparency option on the surface was not selected, so we'll turn it off and we do another render the stars have gone and that's because the uh, image plane is now blocking out the background that would go along with it now if I go to the edge of the scene I can show you where it suddenly gets cut off as you can see there let's move this out of the way these uh, background stars are no longer in the image itself that's because we've taken off our transparency map so you want a transparency map to go along with this scene anyway just to make sure that everything fits properly um, and that way you you can then have your background stars in so uh, if we then oh, it's lost the texture that I had in previously so let's uh, make a copy of this one again copy it back into the transparency channel and change it to our transparency map again so another render and it's back there you go okay so uh, that was a very brief tip there for uh, creating a nebula background um, many people start off with space scenes and why not you know it's the easiest thing to do in a book when it comes to 3d um, so uh, that's it for now I will come back and I will show you how to do something else next time thanks very much